Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Sorry for the tardiness, um, but we definitely appreciate being here. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Try to give some people a moment to join us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. While we're sitting here, let's just get into some worship. Let's get into some worship. Good afternoon, good afternoon. so worthy Jesus we love you God hallelujah Jesus we love you God
Lord God, your glory, give God your best, your glory. Your, give him his due honor and his due praise. Give him his due glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah! Thank you, God. 
right now wherever you are give God some honor and some praise right now just just lift up his name thank you Jesus for what you are doing in our lives Father God thank you so much for joining us for Way Truth Life Church this afternoon um, you know we, we're going through some some growing pains with this whole the, the trying to go live we're trying to figure out what's going to work and what's not going to work you know initially my goal was to go live on YouTube and Facebook and then I'm trying to do it and it's not letting me it's just the last couple of weeks have been been trying so bear with us as we uh try to figure this thing out but uh thank you so much for joining us i'm going to read um the scripture for today uh not for the, the, the just to kind of set things up for us our, our scripture reading will come from psalm uh chapter 3 uh verses 1 through 8 i'm going to read from the new living translation psalm chapter 3 verses 1 through 8 and it reads like this oh lord i have so many enemies so many are against me so many are saying God will never rescue him. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory, the one who holds my head high. I cried out to the Lord and he answered me from his holy mountain. I lay down and slept, yet I woke up in safety for the Lord was watching over me. I am not afraid of 10,000 enemies who surround me on every side. Arise, O oh Lord, rescue me, my God. Slap all my enemies in the face. Shatter the teeth of the wicked. Victory comes from you, O oh Lord. May you bless your people. God's word for God's people. And I'm, <laughs> I'm going to keep it real. I, when I read that part, you just slap all my enemies in the face. The ones who know me know me know that that is something I would absolutely laugh at. But I was in the spirit, so I wasn't even trying to laugh right there. But man, oh man. That sound like that is definitely something I would I would laugh at. Uh, and so, man, that, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Uh, just some quick announcements before we actually get into the word of God. So every um, first, well, this first Sunday is uh, is our service Sunday. Um, we also have online church. where We try to go out and worship with other churches this morning. We had the pleasure and the honor of worshiping with our our dear friends. Um, down at Mosaic Church in Spring Hill uh, in the Columbia area uh, with Pastor Eddie Moe and, and uh, Rachie McFly, Rachel McFly. Uh, the young bloods, they are so uh, incredible. They are, are a blessing in our lives, and we are so much very thankful for them and allowing us the opportunity to worship with them on this morning. Um, it was just a, a truly a pleasure, and I thank God for that. I thank God for great relationships. Thank God for the great relationships that you have in your life. God is a relational God, and he's allowed for us to have uh, amazing relationships with different people. And so um, it's just a, a wonderful thing to have. But yeah, we had the pleasure of worshiping with them uh, this after, or excuse me, this morning. Um, and so other announcements, we, uh, we're, we're every 
first and um, and second and fourth Sunday. We are online. Uh, we're gonna try. We've been online on Facebook and YouTube um, this week. We're just on YouTube, but you know we're gonna find a way to get it uploaded to Facebook as well. Or uh, I'm sorry, we're only on Facebook, but we're gonna find a way to get it uploaded on on YouTube. We're trying to go on, you know, uh, Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff, man. We gonna figure it out, man. Let us know if you have an easy method, you know, of of, of going live on all those platforms. Holler at us, let us know, because we trying to figure out. We did try a couple different platforms, and um, it, it ain't working the way that I, I like. But nonetheless. God's word is going to go forth either way. You know, it don't matter. We got to go, however we got to go live, if it's just one platform, it don't matter. God's word is going to go forth. Uh, we're going to give him glory. Uh, we still going to praise and uplift his name regardless. It don't even matter. He's going to get the honor in this. So uh, every first, second, and fourth Sunday, as it stands right now, we are online. We're doing a virtual, virtual worship. And then every third Sunday, we meet in person at 2701 Halls Hill Pike. Murfreesboro, Tennessee, 37130. Once again, that is 2701 Halls Hill Pike, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, 37130. We meet every Thursday, every third Sunday, and every fifth Sunday we meet in person. Amen. Every third and fifth Sunday. So we love for you all to come out and join us in uh in live worship. It ain't nothing like being in the building though. Um it's still amazing. Uh or it's just as amazing, if not more. So gratitude over attitude is something that we like to do as well. Um, gratitude over attitude is basically an, an opportunity for us to give God glory um, for those things in our lives that happen that we don't quite understand what God is doing or why God is doing it. Um, but when we kind of step back from the situation, be more optimistic as opposed to pessimistic about a situation. Um, and God just, God is already speaking to us in those situations, but we finally are able to hear and see what, and, and, uh, know and, and see what God is doing. So in those situations, um, we just want to give God praise. We want to glorify his name. We want to uplift his name and we want to show our gratitude for what we're doing. So gratitude over attitude, something you might have been frustrated about. You didn't really understand what's going on. And then you just step back and you give God praise. And I'll give an example for me, man, it's really probably uh, and, and will continue to be for the foreseeable future um, is going to be. It used to be my job I, I, as far as like not my actual job, but the travel to my job. Now it's kind of transitioning into this whole planning of this church, you know, and um, I'm a very impatient person and I want the stuff to happen very soon, but it's a slow process, right? And so instead of me being upset uh, or having an attitude about the process, I need to enjoy the process, trust the process. And be happy about the process. Glorify God throughout the process. So that is my gratitude over attitude for just thanking God um, for just being there uh, and the way that he's there and, and consistently and always just showing us his love and his mercy and his grace. And it doesn't matter how long it takes to, to, to build because this is not my church. This is his church and he can. He can build it however, how fast he wants to, how slow he wants to. But we are counting the cost. We are counting the cost. Um, in terms of knowing what it's like to really be in this and doing this for him. So, man, Lord, we love you. We thank you for that. Um, so what's your gratitude over attitude? Just put it put it in the chat. If you're with us, put it in the chat. Um, type it down there. Let us know what is your gratitude over attitude for this week, something that you were upset about, and then you look back and you say, you know what, actually, God is God is good. I'm going to just I'm gonna praise him anyway. Amen. So let us know that because that gives us an opportunity to stay connected with you all as well. It's just giving God, whenever whenever you see people's testimony, that just uplifts you. You never know what uh, people are going through and how um, you sharing with somebody something that you overcome, how that will strengthen them. Amen. How that will provide them. You could be the, the, the beacon of light that people uh, that, that God is using to uplift somebody else. Right. Uh, 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 you, we cannot hide that light. We should not hide that light. If we're sitting on the hill, we, 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 you can't hide that light like, the, like Jesus says. Um, and so we, we have to be able to share with one another those things. So gratitude over attitude. Once again, uh, let us know that. Now, you know what? Let's get into the word. Let's get into the word. I'm going to try not to to keep y'all too long. I'm going to try not to. That's, that's, uh, it's not my intention, but, um, I, you know, I just, 
tap into the Holy Spirit and, and, and let him do what he do. You know what I'm saying? We let the Holy Spirit do what he do. Um, but my intention is definitely not to hold you long. So we've been in this series uh, this month um, for the month of, oh, what, what, hold on, we're in, we in November now. <laughs> yeah, we're in November now. Let me, let me, let me fall back for a second. Hi, huh? no pun intended, but that was kind of slick. You feel what I'm saying? I said, let me fall back and we just, you know, say with the time, you know, but yeah, um, we were in a series in October and now transitioning into December um, entitled Death. That is, uh, that is a, an acronym for uh, depression, emptiness, anxiety, and fear, right? When you can't hear, when you feel like you can't hear uh, God's voice, when you can't, you got so much going on, you cannot hear from God, right? What do you do in those situations? And so that's what we have been talking about. We've been talking about uh, death, and, uh, or sorry, depression and, and, and emptiness, anxiety, and fear, the acronym DEATH. Um, and so we've been going through that. We are on um, chapter six because we, we try to, we, you know, we try to be creative with it. Uh, and so we're, we're going, we call in our, ser in our sermon series, each sermon series is a chapter. This chapter is chapter six. Chapter six, um, uh, is titled no worries. Amen. No worries. And so we are going to be putting in at, um, you know what? Let me open up a prayer before I even get into the scripture. I'm going to just open this up with prayer. Uh, father God, we thank you, Lord. Please bless this time that we have together, Father God. Um, you are so amazing and so wonderful, and we love you, Father God. Um, I just ask that you hide this, your servant, behind the cross, that those who are here may see thee and not me. Um, let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, Father God. Remove me, this, your servant. Remove Robert Vickers and insert yourself. Download into me your Holy Spirit, Father God, that I don't speak of myself, but I speak only the things that you will have me to speak. Um, this is your time. This is your space. Have your way, Father God, King Jesus. Just come in and, and make a move on us unlike ever before, Father God. Though we are, we may be worshiping virtually and we're not able to, to, to physically connect, the, the great thing about serving you, Father God, is that Wi-Fi connection never gets disturbed. That Wi-Fi connection is always solid. It's always strong. There is never a place we can go where that connection will be disturbed. And we thank you for that, Father God. So while we are worshiping, Father God, move on our hearts. Uh, um, convict us, Father God. Show us your love and mercy as well. We love you, Jesus. We thank you. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Father, wow. Um, we love you, Lord. And so we're going to put in at uh, in the book of Philippians, um, the epistle written by the Apostle Paul, one of the epistles, one of the many epistles. That boy was writing, writing, for real. He had the spirit on him. He was writing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And so um, we want to put in at verses, um, we're, we're on chapter, if I didn't say it already, we're in chapter four. We're going to be in chapter four, verses six through seven. Um, and so we'll put in there. And so the word of God reads like this. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Mm, that's good. That's just like, man, you know, the word taste and see how the Lord is good. That's just like you having the, the bite of like a, a, of a favorite dish right there. So much so you're like, let me get some more of that. So I'm going I'm I'm to just read that again. Um, do, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you so much, Lord. And so, like I said, the title of this chapter in this death series that we are going through, this depression, this emptiness, this anxiety, this fear series that we're going through, this particular chapter is called No Worries. No Worries, right? We did Hakuna Matata a couple weeks ago. And what does that mean? It means no worries for the rest of your day. It, you know what I'm saying? Like, and so this is no worries. You know how, and, and that is a response 
um, that I give to people quite frequently when, you know, especially when I'm texting or, or just having a conversation and somebody may uh, apologize for something or, you know, they may have missed something. I'm like, oh, no worries, no worries. Um, and then we say that, uh, you know, that's, a, that's a, a saying that we say nowadays. No worries, no worries, right? And so this, when, when, when Paul speaks about anxious, right? What, matter of fact, let me ask you, what makes you anxious? Put it in the chat. What's something that makes you anxious? Something, something that, that gives you anxiety, that, that, that makes you anxious, right? What gives you the greatest amount of anxiety, the greatest amount that just makes you very, very anxious? I will say for me, something that makes me anxious is flying. Um, that probably gets me the, the most anxious because I, I'm just in the air. I don't, I don't like roller coasters or anything like that. Anything where I'm up in the air and my body is moving and I don't have no control over it, it just gives me anxiety. It makes me anxious. And I, I, I don't care how long the fight is. And, um, you know, God bless my wife. I want to take her and give her the world. Um, but that is a huge stumbling block right there. If, if you try to give your wife the world, but you're scared to get on the plane. Amen. That, that is, that's a tough sledding. Uh, God bless her, though, and God keep her and give her the strength to be with a husband that don't like to fly. Well, Lord, have mercy. What's she going to do? But listen, I get on it, man, but I just don't, I don't really want to be on it long. You know, like I've flown to California and that's the furthest that I've flown. And, and you know, I can do it. Don't get me wrong. I'll do it. I'll make it through it. But boy, oh boy, am I anxious that whole time because I'm just I, I don't have control. Like I, I would much rather drive to California as opposed to flying to California. I know, I know that's really like a, at least from where I am in here in, in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, that's like a day. Literally like a whole day. You know, I ain't never made a trip. Maybe I will one day. Hopefully I will by God's grace be able to make that trip one day. But man, I would much rather spend a day, <laughs> a day's worth in the car. I'm going to break it up. You know, I ain't crazy. I'm going to break it up. But I would much rather do that than get on a plane for four hours. You know, I heard flying to Hawaii is like 14 hours. I would love to go to Hawaii one day. Maybe, you know, I, I'll find a drug or something that will knock me out completely and I can go. But listen, it just gives me a lot of anxiety because, frankly, I'm not in control. I am not in control of the situation. And when I am not in control of a situation, yes, that's going to give me anxiety. And I'm willing to bet anything that you might conjure up or think of that gives you anxiety because you're not in control of the situation. But Paul says here, don't be anxious about anything, right? Now, as my mentor, Dale Bryan, always tells me, spiritual uh, spiritual mentor, uh, Dale Bryan, he tells me a lot. He says, um, we have a, the Bible puts things in certain ways because we have a tendency to do the opposite. Right. So Paul is telling us, don't be anxious because we have the proclivity and the tendency to be anxious. Right. He tells us, don't be like that because he knows that. Yeah, we have and uh, we are more than likely, <laughs> more than likely to be anxious about something. Right. And we spend so much time in, in anxiety and worry It's basically like a part time job. Think about how much time that you spend and, and worrying and anxiety, right? Maybe if you're going through a depression, feeling empty, feeling fearful. Think about how much time. You basically, it's like a part-time job for you. Because you think like a part-time job, you're working like, what, 20 hours a week or something like that? Man, think about it. Think about how much time we spend in that stuff, man. It's, just, it's really like a part-time job. We got to quit that job. You got to let that job go. I got to let that job go. Hallelujah. We got to let that go. We got to put in our two weeks notice to anxiety right now, today, D today, decide that you are going to put in your two weeks notice on anxiety. No longer are you going to be spending so much time in that anxiety and that worry. And hopefully this will help you put in your two weeks notice on today. So just for context, uh, Paul, at the end of chapter three, right, because we have to take uh, into the account uh, the entirety of. Of a, of a passage, right? You can't just pull out one verse and think you know exactly what it means in order to set this up, in order for us to truly understand what God is trying to say to us, we have to go back a little bit. So for context in chapter three, towards the end of chapter three, Paul is talking about, uh, uh, he talks about those who aren't living for Christ, right? And how they are, how these individuals who aren't living for Jesus, who aren't living for Christ have made their investment in the world. However, 
uh, he talks about the citizens of the kingdom, those of us who have given our lives to Christ, those of us who have made that solid confession of faith, uh, uh, that heaven, uh, the, the kingdom of heaven, we are awaiting the return of Christ, right? We're citizens of the kingdom of heaven and we are awaiting the return of Christ. And he talks about how our mortal bodies will be changed into glorious bodies, right? This is all at the end of chapter three. And then when we transition over to, to chapter four in verse one, he says, therefore, stay true to the Lord. Then he advises us to remain joyful because the Lord is coming. Right. So all of this is setting up, setting us up to where we are now, where he's talking about. Don't be anxious. Amen. Don't be anxious about anything. All right. We're not to be anxious about anything because this earth. Isn't all there is. Hallelujah. That this earth is not all there is. But Jesus is coming back. All right. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, our King is coming back. And if earth was all there is, man, there would be a lot to be nervous about. There were a lot to be anxious and worried about. But knowing that Jesus is coming back and he's coming back for his church. If you are a member in that body. There's no reason to be anxious. There's no reason to worry. That's why Paul is saying, don't be anxious about anything. Don't be anxious about anything because you're going to win. You're going to win. You're going to make it through. You're going to be okay because Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Amen. So there's three reasons not to have any words. I'm going to give you three reasons why you should not have any words. All right. Reason number one, prayer. Simple. These are, these are three simple concepts. They're simple concepts, but it's hard for us to put into practice because we get so consumed. Oh, uh, there's our my Bluetooth speaker cutting off. I knew that was going to happen eventually. We live, y'all. It is what it is. But reason, three reasons. One, prayer. All right? Two, peace. Three, protection. All right? Prayer, peace, and protection. Three reasons why we do not have to worry. Now, we're going to go through this in an expository fashion. I say this every time, but, you know, we get new people joining us, so that's verse by verse if you didn't know. So we're going to take it verse by verse. We only got two verses, so, you know, by the grace of God, I won't keep you too long, but we're going to, you know, we're going to go through it. So, verse 6 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. All right? Let your request be made known to God. When we think about it, being anxious uh, uh, or having to worry about certain things, uh, I'm a big sports fan. I'm going to have to slide in a sports analogy at some point, right? Here's the time. I'm about to do it. Uh, <laughs> so, listen, the Bulls, when Michael Jordan was playing back in the 90s, they weren't worried when they had Michael Jordan on the court. Yeah, the game might be you know, getting kind of close. There might be some tight situations, but they weren't really worried. You knew what was going to happen. God forbid if you was a, a fan of the opposite team playing the Bulls and you see Michael Jordan with the ball in his hands with seconds going off the clock. That's an anxious time for you, right? But for those on the team of the Bulls, they not worried. They, they not worried. If you want to go to football, Tom Brady, Right. Or even now, Patrick Mahomes is getting into that 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 category where you really the, 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 the teammates of Tom Brady, they weren't worried. The opposite team, had, they had some anxiety. The fans of that's rooting against the Patriots or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when he was playing for them. They were anxious. Right. But the team that he was on was not anxious. They had complete faith. They had seen Tom Brady come through time and time and time again in the clutch. Right. If you want to talk, I'm talking about my favorite sports here. Uh, we got basketball, football, uh, and then boxing. I love boxing. Floyd Mayweather. Right. Floyd Mayweather was very unbothered in the ring. He carried himself with the utmost confidence because he knew there wasn't nothing he hadn't seen. There wasn't nothing he was going to go through. There might be some tight rounds, but ultimately he was going to find a way to win. Amen. And 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 you you. So what am I saying here? When you're in Christ, when you are on team Jesus, there is no reason to be anxious. There is no reason to be worried because guess what? In the end, we go win, 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 no matter what. 
Amen. We're going to win, win, win no matter what. It's always going to be a win. Jesus is always going to come through. And the only reason why it feels like clutch is because we get so wrapped up in ourselves that we like, man, God, you coming in right on the nick of time. But God is sitting in the ship while everybody else is wondering, like, Lord, why are you willing to let us perish and Jesus is asleep? Like, this is nothing. This is nothing. Where is your faith? Amen. Because you've seen me come through before. You know what I'm capable of. So why worry? Why be anxious? We know what God is capable of. We should know what God is capable of. All the things. Just look at your life. Look over your life. How do you think that you made it this far if not for the love and the protection of Jesus? If you think you did it on your own, you are sadly mistaken. You ain't that strong. I'm not that strong. I'm not that capable. You are not that competent. No. To get through all the stuff that we got through. Because it's not like you went through life, died, and came back and you're like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to make sure that I get it right this time. I done seen it. No. God is constantly being there for us. And, and when we encounter things that we have not seen, we don't know what's going to happen. When we don't know how we're going to make it through a situation, God will just pick you up and carry you through it. It wasn't you. Amen. So we don't have, need to be anxious. Paul is saying, don't be anxious for anything. Right. But pray about everything. He says, pray about we got to pray about everything. Pray about everything. Not just some things like, OK, now I got to call in the, 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 the big dogs. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how when you on the, on the, uh, on, on the phone and customer service, you ain't getting the answer that you want from customer service, and they gotta escalate the situation, right? And get a supervisor on the on the on the line, right? Listen, in everything we must pray. We don't need to, we we escalate it all. We take it all to Jesus. Every situation, we are taking it all to him. Pray about everything, every decision, big or small. Pray. Pray about it. Okay? And he says. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Those are very important. Prayer and supplication, thanksgiving. Very important. So prayer is the communication with God. It's basically communication with God. And in any relationship, communication is a two-way street. Amen? It's a two-way street. That means you speak and you listen. You're not just speaking the whole time. That ain't no relationship. That's just somebody running off at the mouth. A relationship, or excuse me, communication. Communication is speaking and listening, right? God is not some gene where you just get to make some, make some three wishes and he just going to grant your wish. No, God is going to tell you what he needs from you. We have to be listening. Our issue is we do too much talking in the relationship. Because we think that God is just here for our beck and call. And it's actually the other way around. Amen. It's the other way around. We are here to service him. All right. It's not just us just praying for what we want. Okay. It's, it's not just us asking him for what we want. But prayer involves a lot. It involves, uh, uh, um, it does involve asking him. Don't get me wrong. We definitely need to ask him. We, we, were, we just talked about going to him through uh prayer and supplication and let him know your needs, your requests, right? We were talking about that. We're going to get into that. But it's not just praying and asking God for something, but it is also giving God praise, giving God thanks and asking for forgiveness. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. It's asking God for forgiveness, okay? We have to be, we have to have a repentant heart, meaning we have to want to change our ways. And we are constantly asking God for forgiveness because we are sinners. We are sinners asking God for forgiveness. And so prayer is more than just asking, telling God what you want. It's thanking him, it's praising him, it's asking for forgiveness. And it's supplication. And we're about to get into supplication right now. Supplication is basically a humble request. It is a humble request. And it's, you can do it on behalf of yourself or behalf of others. But it is a humble request that you are making to God. That's why Paul says prayer and supplication. Amen. 
All right? Because prayer is not just limited just for you asking him something. But we need to come to God and give him thanks first. You think about the Lord's Prayer. Jesus said, uh, uh, how, hallowed be thy name. He gave God glory. He gave God, he, he acknowledged who God is. He said, hallowed be thy name. Right? Then he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Right? He's going through, if you really look at the Lord's Prayer, you will see these things going, come into place where you are giving God thanks. You're praising him. You're worshiping him for who he is. And then you're asking for forgiveness. Right? We ask for forgiveness for our transgressions and forgive those who trespass or, or transgress against us. Right? Depending on the version that you know. It's all in there. Okay? So Paul is saying with prayer and supplication. So the supplication part is when you humbly submit your requests. You're humbly submitting. Now there uh, is a difference, right? When you because oftentimes you'll hear people saying when they pray and they pray with authority, right? They're praying hard. I declare. I decree. All that stuff. Listen. All I'm gonna say to that is the Bible says to come to God with supplication. Amen. Come to God with uh, humbly. Amen. Like, like, because when, when decree, actually, if you, you know what a decree is, that is something that's like a, um, that's like a, like a authority. You know what I'm saying? That's like an order issued by a legal authority when you decree something. And listen, y'all, as much as we like to think that we have authority, God gave us dominion over earth. But think about it like this. If your child came up to you and said, I decree that you give me such and such, I decree that you, come on, man, that you can't order, my child can't order me to do anything, but I'm going to do stuff out of the kindness of my heart. My child can't order me to order to do anything, right? And, and the only time that my child has authority is if I'm, if I done left them at home by themselves. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> like if, if when I, when my, when I was old enough and my parents felt comfortable enough to, to leave and go, you know, go somewhere and they can leave me and my brother at home, then I had some authority. I can have authority over my brother. But when my daddy was home, amen, when my mama was home, guess who had the authority? They did. All right. And guess what? God ain't never going to leave you nor forsake you. He ain't going out of town. He ain't going nowhere. So our authority when it relates to him, we have none. So that's why we come to him humbly, right? You know, when you need something from your parent, you're not coming demanding. When you need something from your parent, you are not coming uh, 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 in a demanding way. You are coming humbly because you know you messed up, chances are. You understand what I'm saying? Imagine if you got a bad report card and you need something from your parents. You're not coming like, listen, I demand, I declare, I decree that you do this. Like, who are you talking to? You got an F on your report card, dog. Like, you can't come to me like that. But if you come humbly, then I might hear you. Amen? So Paul is saying, make your request known with supplication. You come to God humbly. You, you tuck your tail. You come to God knowing that you are a sinner. Amen? Knowing that you need help. Knowing that you ain't right. And you come to God and you humbly ask him for what it is that you need. You ask him humbly, right? You, 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 we're praying humbly, acknowledging who he is. That's how we come to God. That's how we come to God. If we come to God any other way, we got to be careful. I know we like to feel like we, we got some level of something. Listen, man, we don't. We don't. We're all at the mercy of Christ. And it is what it is. It is what it is. That's just the truth. We're at his mercy. But he is so merciful that he ain't take us out. When we did something crazy, or when we said something crazy, or when we were or, or mean to others, when we weren't uplifting his word, he ain't take us out. That is a grace. That's grace. That's mercy. So we thank God for that. And then he says, with thanksgiving. He says, come with prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. Right? Praising God for what he's done. We're giving God glory for what he's done. We're thanking God for what he's done. Not only what he has done, but what he will do. Amen. We're thanking God for what he has done and what he will do. Amen. When we come to God with, with thanksgiving, that's, that's why we don't need to have any worries. That's why we don't need to be anxious for anything. Coming to God with thanksgiving because he has been uh, uh, carrying us through. Amen. 
That's why we with, with situations that once fed on us like a mosquito. You know how the mosquitoes get in the summer, and I, I don't know why I attract mosquitoes like a mug. You know, I gotta, I can't go outside without putting some some bug spray on. I'm gonna get lit up, right? And the mosquitoes are just come in and just just be all on you and, and and sucking your blood. It's like you know, like 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 anxiety can do that for you when you're anxious and when you're worried about something. It can just uh uh be. Just take it out of you. Just as soon as you walk outside, as soon as you go anywhere and you're trying to have a good time, you're trying to do something, there go anxiety right there on you, right? And you're trying to slap it off of you. But it's, they just keep coming and they right there on you. But your thanksgiving, your thanksgiving will now starve them out. You starve out those mosquitoes with your praise and with your thanksgiving. You starve out anxiety. You starve out depression. You starve out emptiness. You starve out fear with your praise. And your thanksgiving. That's what we have to do. Give God praise. When we pray. When we pray. Give God praise. Don't just ask him for something. But thank him for what he's doing. And don't ever think that he ain't active. And he ain't moving. Because he's always moving. He's always doing something. Because you're breathing. Every single breath is a blessing. So that's enough to thank him for right there. Amen. Everything that you have is a blessing. That's enough to thank God for right there. Right? And he says, make your request known. Make your request known. Now let's get into where we come to God humbly and ask him for what we are seeking for. Ask him for what we need. And basically, it's like putting your, put your request, right? Uh, for those of us who have a job, you have to, to put in a request if you need some time off. You want to use your vacation time. You want to use some PTO or something like that. Uh, you got to put in a request for that. And a lot of times you got to put it in in advance. You might have to, whatever your company policy is, a week, two weeks, you know, months in advance, whatever. You got to put in that time just to see, like I'm hoping. And you, it's no guarantee that you're going to get that time. There's no guarantee that you will receive what you are seeking. But with Jesus, with God, Paul is saying, make your request known. Put your request in so you can go to God. And you might have a request of God like, God, I just, I just need some time, Jesus. I need some time away from this depression. I need some time away from this emptiness. I need some time away from this fear. I need some time away from this anxiety. Just, just give me some time off. And then God is like, it don't matter when you ask me. You can ask me the day before. You can ask me the day of. You can ask me in advance. It don't matter when you ask me, but the fact that you are asking me, that you come to me because you know that I'm the only one that can grant you that. Make your request known to God. Put your time in. Ask Jesus for that time that you need. Ask him for the time with him. Spend that time with Jesus. Put in your request, right? And sometimes we even got a request for overtime. Hey, man, we got it on our job. We have to put in our request for overtime. Or if they offer an overtime, you put in a request to get overtime, right? You make your request known to God, asking for an overtime, a, a double time, a double portion of wisdom, a double portion of guidance, a double portion of patience. Ask your father for that. Ask your father for that double portion. Because when you give your life to Jesus and you allow for him to penetrate your heart the things that you are asking for is not going to be self-centered but it's going to be him focused amen it's not going to be self-centered but it's going to be him focused and so if you you need some guidance and you need some some patience or whatever it is that you need you put in that request to the father and it don't matter what it is it don't matter what time you put uh you you submit it to him He's going to grant your request. Amen. He's going to grant your request. And then verse 7 says, And the peace of God, hmm, hmm, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. The peace, God has said, he said, I will give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. When you pray with supplication and thanksgiving, then you receive peace. Come on, somebody. You receive peace, right? To, to the natural mind, God's peace 
is confusing. To the natural mind, God's peace is baffling. To the natural mind, God's peace is bewildering. To the natural mind, God's peace is confounding. It doesn't make sense. It is head scratching because you're supposed to be worried, but you got no worries. You're supposed to be so anxious like genuine, but instead you are genuinely unbothered because you know that your father in heaven has given you peace. The natural mind can't understand that. But God gives you his peace. This, this amazing peace that God gives you. God doesn't give. Matter of fact, John 14, 27 says this. He says, peace. Jesus is talking to his disciples. And by virtue of talking to his disciples, we get to, to, benefit, we get to eat the crumbs off the table that he was giving to his disciples. This is what he says. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let your hearts not be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He said, let your heart not be troubled, nor let it not be afraid, because I'm giving you my peace. Amen. I, 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 Jesus said, I'm giving you my peace. That is the, that's the best peace. Right. He don't give as the world gives. He's not an Indian giver. He, he doesn't give according to what you do. Like the world. It's not transactional, right? You don't have to give to get. Jesus is saying, I give because I love you. I don't give like the world. And I'm giving you peace. I'm not leaving you behind some money that's going to run out. I'm not leaving you behind materials that's going to fade away and die. I am leaving you peace. And that peace is not going anywhere. That's why it's a peace that goes and that surpasses all understanding. Because you can't understand that. The natural mind can't understand that. It is peace. It is that Jesus peace. It's that Jesus peace. And I ain't talking about this. Like, this is a Jesus piece right here that I'm wearing. And, you you know, I, I ain't got no money like that. So it's just a little something, something. Um, but, you know, with people that got money, they be having, they be rocking the Jesus piece. They got all kind of diamonds in it and all kind of stuff. Be paying all kind of money for a Jesus piece. But this Jesus piece, this Jesus piece, it isn't a chain that we wear around our neck. But it breaks the chain that was around our neck because of our sin. Because of our sin. It's not jewelry. That Jesus peace is not a jewelry, but it will have you shining. Hey, man, it will have you shining. It will have you smiling. It will have you feeling real good. It will make you be, be just something about you where people see it. You ain't even got to have jewelry on, but people just see your, see your, the, the essence and, and, and see your countenance of how you're carrying yourself. And it's like, man, how can I get that? Hey, man. How can I get that? I, I, I need some of that. Amen. You know, like people will compliment you. Maybe they might compliment you on your shoes. They might compliment you on your fit. They might compliment you on your hair. All that stuff is nice. But when was the last time you were complimented on your peace? Amen. When was the last time I was complimented on my peace? That's like, yo, man, that peace look good on you. Where you get that? Where did you get that? Who, who gave you that peace? Who gave that to you? And that's when we have the opportunity to be a witness for our God. Amen. And then verse 7, he continues. Paul continues. And he says, the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Will guard your hearts and minds. God's peace is, is, is basically like, it's like a password that protects your heart. God's peace is, a, is, is your heart needs to be password protected by God's peace. God's peace will be that password protection to your heart. I, and we all know, you know, we got thousands of passwords, right? We got you. I got I got one for my job. I got to change like every every three months. Yeah, I didn't have so many different passwords. Now I got a password. Now they always tell you, you got to choose something strong. But man, I can't remember different passwords. I got to use the same password each and every time. I'm a confused. I'm going to not be able to log on to some stuff that I need. I might need to pay a bill. I can't even log on to pay my bill because I didn't change the password so many times. Hey man, you be forgetting because you got so many things that need to be password protected. But our heart. Amen. Our heart in Jesus name can be protected. Password protected by J-E-S-U-S. -S. 
Right? You type that in to the pa to the keyboard of your heart, and that's going to protect it. And can't no, it don't matter what kind of hackers might come in. It don't matter what the enemy says because your word, God's word, is inside of you. God's peace is inside of you, and it will password protect your heart and your mind and your mind. But too often we give out our password, people of God, brothers and sisters. Don't give out your password to just anybody. Don't give out the password to your heart. Don't give out the password to your mind to just anybody. We just giving out our passwords when we just mindlessly do things, whether it be on the internet or whether it be on TV or whatever you find yourself indulging in, just mindlessly engaging in certain behaviors that are not of God, not knowing that you are downloading into your mind and then into your heart all kinds of unhealthy stuff. You have given your password away. Don't give your password away. Don't give your password away. Let the peace of God guard your heart, guard your mind. People have bodyguards. Well, not everybody. I ain't got no bodyguard. I don't, I don't can't afford no bodyguard. Right? But you see, the people that can afford it, the celebrities, people that think that, you know, they got something to lose, they walk around with bodyguards. Right? But do you have a heart and a mind guard. Do those individuals have a guard for their heart and their mind? Do you have a guard? You have a bodyguard for your heart and your mind. Because Jesus Christ can be that. Amen. Jesus Christ can be the one that guards our heart and our mind. Matter of fact, in Matthew, if you bear with me for one moment, let me get to Matthew. Matthew chapter, uh, is it 10? I want to say it's Matthew chapter 10, verse uh, 28. Give me give me a second. Give me a second. Let me get there. Let me get there. Let me get there. Let me get there. Hold on. Hold on. Stay with me. 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 Uh, Matthew 10, 20. Yeah, 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 yeah. 10, 28. Matthew 10, 28 says this. Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God. Fear only God who can destroy both the body and soul. Mm. Who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Don't be afraid of those who want to kill the body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear God who can destroy both the soul and body in hell. Only thing we need to fear is God. If we have Jesus Christ as a protection of our heart, a bodyguard of our heart and our mind, there's no need to fear. There's no need to have anxiety. There's no need to worry about anything else. Because Jesus Christ is on stand. He, he's on guard. Guarding your heart. Guarding your mind. Amen. We, 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 we got to get, we have to get a warranty for our heart and our mind. Hmm? Amen. We need it. We, 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 we need it. You know how when you go to the store and you'll buy an electronic and they'll ask you, do you want to get the warranty with you? You want to purchase the warranty uh, 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 with this, this, this purchase that you got because the warranty will protect. <laughs> it will, it's supposed to protect you from stuff happening that when something happens to this product that you have purchased, right, you are able to get a new version of that product. Amen. Yeah, hey, ooh, I'm glad there wasn't in that cup right there. I knocked the cup over on my laptop. Ooh, thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There wasn't nothing in that cup. But when you need to purchase something, you also uh, are offered the warranty, and that should protect you when something happens. Amen. We, 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 we need to get a warranty. We have a warranty. I'm not even going to say we need to get one. We have a warranty. Once we have uh, are, are in Christ, we have a warranty. Right? When, when you just, when you feel lost. Amen? Because a warranty is supposed to cover when something is lost or stolen or damaged or broken. Amen? You can, you can reach out to the company and get you a new one. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, 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 but God needs to be your warranty for your heart and your mind. If, if, if you ever feel lost and you just don't know your way, God can be the warranty. If you ever feel like something was stolen to you, you want to claim back what the enemy stole from you. 
your warranty for your heart and for your mind is Jesus. Whenever you feel damaged, if you feel damaged by life, when life just be life and doing the things that life does, you 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 want to have a warranty. Jesus will cover that. If you ever felt broken, have you ever felt broken? Hallelujah. Have you ever felt broken in your life? God will cover that. God needs to be your warranty. In Jesus' name. And that warranty never runs out. Hallelujah, that warranty never runs out. You might have a warranty that only lasts some time. For the small products, you might get a lifetime warranty. Hallelujah, God, for your heart and your mind, you have a lifetime warranty. In the name of Jesus, know that you have a lifetime warranty. And if you need to show proof of purchase... For whatever reason, if you need to show proof of purchase, I'm gonna, here, I'm going to give you something to show proof of purchase. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. He says, I will give you a new heart and put in, uh, put in a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out, uh, out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. If you need proof of purchase. You need proof of purchase? I'm going to give you something else. Psalm 51, uh, uh, chapter 51, verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Amen. You need some more proof of purchase? I'll give you a proof of purchase. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hey Amen. You, you need you need some more proof of purchase. I'll give you some. Second Corinthians chapter five verse seventeen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, Hallelujah, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, the new things, uh, or, or uh, behold, all things have become new. God, if you in Christ, mm, if you in Christ, he gives you the lifetime war. You have a lifetime warranty in Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't have to worry because I'm in Christ. I, I, I don't have to fear because I'm in Christ. I don't have to be anxious because I'm in Christ. I don't have to be stressing out because I'm in Christ. I don't have to be down and out because I am in Christ. I don't have to be depressed because I am in Christ. I don't have to feel empty because I am in Christ. I don't have to feel rejected because I am in Christ. I don't have to be in a Christ is because I know who Christ is is whenever I am in crisis because I am in Christ I know who Christ is amen so no worries no worries put your two weeks in on that part time job called worry and anxiety and fear and depression you submit your two weeks. Matter of fact, don't even submit your two weeks. You can walk right off the job. Walk right off the job. You don't need that job. Walk right off. You're not even putting in no two weeks. you walking right off the job. In Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for being so amazing. Being so wonderful. Being so gracious towards us, God. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Father God. Today, we serve an eviction notice. We are, we are, we're not even put in in two weeks. We're walking right off that job of anxiety. No longer having any worries because we know you're coming back. Whew! We know you're coming back. What is there to worry about when I know that my God and my Lord and my Savior is coming And I am in you. You are in me. There is no reason to worry. From henceforth, from now on, we will cast all of our cares upon you, God. No longer will we walk around in this worry and anxiety. And even when worry and anxiety tries to creep up in our minds and creep up in our heart, we can just say, hey, here's the exit. You can go. Because we have Jesus. And when we have Jesus, we don't have room for anything else. Take up residence in our heart, God. Remove the no, the, the, uh, put up a no vacancy sign in our hearts and in our minds, God, because you have moved in. We cast out the enemy and we cast out the doubt and the shame, the fear, the depression, the anxiety, 
You cast it out, Lord. You kicked it out, Father. And now we have you, Father, if any of your people, if any of your people need anything of you, Father God, you already know what it is, Father. We just ask that you, you do those things that you see fit in Jesus' name. Only you, not us, only you can do it, Father God. You know how the commercial says, only you can prevent forest fires, Father God. Only you can prevent the fires or put out the fires that come and try to inv invade and, and uh, uh, take over our minds and our hearts, Father God. Only you can put out those fires with the living water. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. It is in your mighty name that we pray. Amen. And so we're going to, you know, bear with me. Power on. Connecting our power. We're just going to worship Bluetooth as we close, close out. Bluetooth connected. We're just going to worship a little bit as we close out. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. You're just so amazing. Thank you, Jesus. If you need prayer, Come near if you need me, prayer, just type it in the chat. Me, if you need prayer for anything, Jesus, the virtual altar is open. Create an altar in your space, in your place. No other help I know. You bring your request to the Father. Jesus, you bring your request to the to the Lord, to the God of the heavens. Everything's crazy. You 
you are still God. Yes. And that's never changed. You are still God. You will always be God. There is nobody that can remove you from your throne, God. Thank you, Jesus. You are my focus. Yes. You cannot be voted out of office, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's not changing.
That surpasses all understanding.